Not every game can be a slam dunk. Quite often, we give in to the enormous hype surrounding these games and end up making purchases that we go on to regret. In this feature, we'll be taking a look at 15 such games. Killzone Build as the Halo killer prior to its launch, Killzone 1 and the PS2 couldn't even kill a fly. It was a beautiful looking game, but it was dragged down by stupid AI, timid shooting, and a bland campaign. A whole lot of people gave in to the enormous hype surrounding it, and a whole lot of people were immensely disappointed with the investment that they made in its purchase. Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon the seventh generation of Pokemon has its fans like every generation of Pokemon does, but there is a vocal selection of the series' fan base that isn't too fond of the Alola games. Highly linear, a disappointing plot that's shoved down our throats, no freedom to explore a region that is exciting only on the surface. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were even more disappointing though, because they had very little tangible differences from the base games, and they were full-priced new releases. There's nothing worse than buying a disappointing game twice. Mario Tennis Aces Most of Nintendo's first-party franchises have seen excellent revivals or peaks on the Nintendo Switch, from Super Mario to The Legend of Zelda, from Super Smash Bros. to Mario Kart. Hell, even something like Mario Party is better on Switch than it has been in ages. Mario Tennis, though, continues to be disappointing. It's an enjoyable enough game, but it's lacking in key areas such as disappointing adventure modes, lackluster online options, and even more. Star Fox Zero Star Fox was once one of Nintendo's top franchises. Sadly, it's been going through some rough times for a while now. Star Fox Zero was probably the lowest this series has ever sunk, proving that even the masterminds at Platinum Games can stumble every now and then. It was a bare-bones experience that almost purposefully annoyed players every step of the way with its needlessly obtuse controls, and was far from the revival this once-great franchise so desperately needs. Anthem BioWare have been going down a steep slope for a number of years now, and with Anthem, it feels like they've hit rock bottom. It's a game that fails at almost everything it tries to be. It's not a very good BioWare game because of its disappointing story, lackluster writing, and bland, unmemorable characters. It's not a good looter because it doesn't have good loot and is painfully lacking in content. It's not even a good game because it's a technical mess, less so now than it was at launch, and is a repetitive, mundane grind. Not exactly a purchase anyone would be happy with. Fallout 76 Anthem isn't the only disappointing shared world shooter of the last few months, though. Fallout 76 launched a few months before Anthem and was just as problematic, if not more. An absolute mess from a technical standpoint, with no story or characters whatsoever to pull you in in any meaningful way. Terrible shooting mechanics so that even the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay was an absolute chore, and every quest boiling down to a fetch quest. Fallout 76 was, and still remains, the very definition of a bad purchase. Knack Sony, in all of their infinite wisdom, decided to launch their next generation console with Knack. And given the fact that there wasn't too much else to buy that you couldn't get elsewhere, a lot of people bought Knack. A lot of people were left disappointed as well. Knack is boring, unimaginative, mind-numbingly dull, and by no means a game that absolutely needed to be on the PS4. Or anything else, for that matter. Resistance Burning Skies The PS Vita didn't receive installments from all of Sony's major franchises, with some like Ratchet & Clank and God of War skipping the handheld. But even those that did grace the system's library didn't always hit their mark. While some, like Uncharted and Killzone, delivered solid enough entries, others, like Resistance, delivered absolute travesties. And a travesty is what Burning Skies was, a far cry from the quality of the PS3 trilogy that spawned it. State of Decay 2 State of Decay on the Xbox 360 was by no means a home run, but it was a solid enough game that you could play for hours on end without getting bored of it. State of Decay 2 had the opportunity to follow up on its predecessor by strengthening upon its foundations, and it did not do that. It proved to be much more repetitive and monotonous of an experience, plagued by a plethora of technical issues and failing to capitalize on the potential of its premise. It's not like there was no fun to be had here, but you had to take the good with the bad, and there was a lot of bad. Duke Nukem Forever Duke Nukem Forever was in development in some form or another for well over a decade. When it finally launched in 2011, 14 years after it was first announced, the vast, vast majority of people agreed on the fact that maybe it would have been better off having not been released. 
failed attempts at edgy humor, dated design that had no place in games any longer, and technical issues were some of its biggest problems. Was it worth 14 years of anticipation? No, no, not even close. Metal Gear Survive Metal Gear Solid 5 was controversial enough as it is, and that's in spite of the fact that, by and large, it was an excellent game with a brilliant systemic open world that encouraged emergent gameplay. Well, Metal Gear Survive had none of that going for it, so it wasn't only controversial, it was widely despised. Why this game bears the Metal Gear moniker is a question that shall forever remain unanswered. Either way, it's a purchase that all fans of the series regret with all of their hearts. Halo 5 Guardians Who would have thought that one day a Halo game would be on a list such as this one? 343 Industries are looking to make amends with the upcoming Infinite, but they landed in hot water with Guardians, a game that seemed to lose much of what made Halo, Halo. Its online offerings were solid enough, but the campaign was an absolute embarrassment, and we are not the only Halo fans who wish it had never happened. Crackdown 3 Crackdown 3 was in development for several years and was delayed multiple times. What we got was not at all a game that required all of that time to be made. What we got was a lifeless, dull, unimaginative game that would have been regressive and boring even 15 years ago. Crackdown 3 promised a lot, but lived up to none of its promises. Thankfully, it's a Game Pass title, so many didn't have to purchase it, but those that did, no doubt, regret their decision. Metroid Prime Federation Force We've been clamoring for a new Metroid Prime game for years, and finally, Nintendo listened to our demands and gave us Federation Force, a co-op first-person shooter that bears very little resemblance to actual Metroid Prime games and doesn't even stand on its own two feet as a good game. In the words of Adam Jensen, we never asked for this. Brink Brink had the potential to be something truly special. It's fair to say that it didn't live up to that potential. While conceptually and in terms of art style, it was fresh and exciting, its execution was shoddy, and what we ended up with was an unfinished and unpolished game that just couldn't do justice to so many of its excellent ideas. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.